Well, today's uh, day's ad, well, if there was one, we'd be sponsored by Crystal Pepsi. God, I miss Crystal Pepsi. I wish it was the 90s so we could bring back Crystal Pepsi. Which is ironic, because today we're talking about a film from the 90s. In today's case, it is Godzilla 1998. Well, isn't that, a best, isn't that kind of a good way to go into this film? I don't know. Let's get right into and discuss Godzilla, 1998, or just Godzilla. Shoo! Let's take me back to the year 1998. And the well, back in the 90s, we had like films were still like, compared to today, and also for the 2000s, films had a lot more. How you say product placements? Well, back then, Godzilla, like any big blockbuster film, had like did like what a lot of films did that time period: product placement. And this film was marketed to hell from companies to, such as this, such as this one. Godzilla's hiding and it's up to you to find him. Just buy a medium or larger drink. If you find Godzilla, use your decoder to reveal what you want. Uh oh. I think I need a bigger bowl. And this? Extremely hot, fiery habanero Doritos. Better keep some water nearby. Fiery habanero Doritos chips. Snack strong. And finally, this. What the? For all those times you wished you had a camera, get the only one-time use camera loaded with Kodak Max Film. Hold it. Because no matter how difficult your subject is, gotcha. You blinked. You'll get better pictures more often. One more. Smile. Never mind. I think I got it. Max one-time use cameras from Kodak. Yeah, I mean, like, back during the time period, like, in the 90s, well, 98, you probably couldn't get away from these ads. This film was marketed like crazy. Like sometimes you'd see buses that say his foot is about this big. Or you'd see a cups that say he's he's big or something like that. So uh, the film Godzilla came from Columbia slash Sony Pictures. And it was also and it was directed by Rowan Emmerich, who did films like Stargate. As well as the day the Earth stood, no, not the Earth stood still. Um, I'm trying to think, what was it? Oh yeah, I don't know. It was called Independence Day, and he also did um, the Day After Tomorrow, something like that. Oh, that's also directed by this Dean Devlin and Ron Emmerich, and Ted Elliott and Terry Russo was done by the story. Oh, and also the film was dedicated to Tomo Yuve Tanaka, uh, the co-creator and producer of, the, of various Godzilla films, who died in April 1997. And the film was actually going to be a whole series that started it, but unfortunately that didn't get to go through, but there was a animated TV series. So in a way, kind of was a success. So... The cast includes for Guzzle Night Eight Matthew Broderick as Doctor Doc wait Doctor Nico Nick Topless. Jean Reno as Philip Roche Maria Hilton as Audrey Timmins 
Hank Azario as Victor Admiral Follett and Kevin Dunn as Colonel Hicks, Michael Lerner as Mary Ebert, Mary Shearer, Harry Shearer as Charles Kamen, Ar Arabelle Fields as Lucy Pallet, Vicky Lewis as Dr. Louise Chapman, and hmm. Oh, and uh, and Lori Goldman as Jean. Um, and also Kirk Carly Carl as Godzilla slash Super Performance, although he was uncredited. Or oh, Frank Walker as the creature of vocal effects. So, what was the story of Godzilla? Well, the story of Godzilla is after, like, say, nuclear, a nuclear um, testings in, well, champagne. I think the pa I think like certain islands basically nuclear weight nuclear radiation has been affecting iguanas and one dinosaur well iguana egg has been affected and as you see through the film this is the creation of the new Godzilla and yeah base and after a while basically it decides to say hey I need to, like, you know, protect my young and, you know, try to find place and systems to keep them going. And, yeah, at the time, when I was a kid, I really liked Godzilla. Like, when I was a kid, um, my dad would always get uh, the Godzilla VHSs from people at his work. I'd watch them. I mean, I probably didn't know what was going I probably didn't understand it because I think they weren't in Japanese. Like, or maybe they weren't. Probably, I'll probably watch the American versions, but yeah, I loved Godzilla as a child. I would watch the movies, this, and I was probably thought, "This is gonna be amazing! It's Godzilla." Um, I mean, looking back at it, um, say the look of Godzilla has, is vastly different than, like, say the Japanese or Toho versions of Godzilla. So, but. Hey, with like you know reimagines, there's always going to be some way of different. There's always going to be trying to say, okay, we want to not, you know, try to make different, you know, especially because um, uh, Tetopolis, who is was one of the creature designs, who created the creature design book for this new guy's old, well, he got his name from uh, Nick, you know, he is giving his name in the film, um. What do I think of the acting? Well, the acting is at time kind of B movie esque in the fact that it's silly. Um, we know it's not great. And honestly, this film is a B movie. You kind of have to kind of not take itself so serious. In the fact, it's just. Anyway, it's like, in a way, it's sort of a B movie. Uh, part of the second act acts of the film is. Godzilla is comes, he goes to a certain New York van, um, he escapes, he tries to run away, traps are set up for him and all that also. Um and then it's revealed and Nick discovers, hey, Godzilla is pregnant. So basically there is suddenly a nest of Godzilla eggs that they need to find. And eventually they find them. But they are in the most place that you probably want to figure out. Madison Square Garden. So, in the third act, the film sort of becomes um, Jurassic Park. Well, because Jurassic Park had came out several years, two years, like several years later, earlier. So they thought, hmm, got Jurassic Park is probably, so let's use a bit of that, okay? Um, so, I mean... The creature designs for the baby Godzilla's are look kind of cool. They look they look pretty neat, they, but at the same time they also look like little Godzilla version of raptors. And um, I gotta say, like say um, yeah, the actors like say Hank Azaria, okay, he's kind of silly. Um, the jabs to Ebert and Roper, like say Mayor Ebert and Gene. 
Heck, even Gene and um, Gene and Ebert, they both said, like, say, well, you know, I mean, it, I mean, it's kind of silly. It's not great, but you know, like, okay, you're gonna use our names, but you're not gonna have the monster eat us or anything like that. So yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like say the mayor, they were just there. Um, the one thing that uh, like a lot reason like a lot of people don't uh, don't really like the film is that they do the one carnal sin of a Godzilla film. Godzilla, you can't really kill off Godzilla in the films. Although, like, well, I mean, you can't just, like, kill him off because, you know, he's Godzilla. But unfortunately, well, he, Godzilla does end up getting killed at the end of the film, so... Yeah, that happens. That's what they wanted to do, so... I mean, as a kid, as like oh, many many years ago, I said I don't like didn't like this film, but at the same time, I realized it's a guilty pleasure movie. It's not. It's trying to be a different film, so it's trying to be a different animal, to the Toho Mock films. But yeah, I mean, some people didn't really like it, and heck, it was even made fun of in Godzilla um, Final Wars, where it was. Just <laughs> Just Net Kong, Cho Oblay Toho bought the rights to this Godzilla and decided to just change it to Zilla. Heck, it was even referenced to other uh, Toho films and just said, Hey, wasn't there enough of Godzilla going around? Said, Yeah, but my, uh, the Americans think that they had their own Godzilla or something like that. Um, I mean. I honestly, uh, looking back, I'd say, think, this film is cheesy, the acting is just alright, the lines, they say, are kind of just, eh, but, I mean, overall, I can't really say that, I can't say I don't hate, I can't say I hate the movie, I can't say that the film is trying to do its own thing. It's trying. Which is good. You want a film to try. So, I gotta say this is me trying not to be too hard on it. But, I still say that unfortunately, the, um, the, I guess the f uh, one thing I'll say is that the first time the actors in a guy's little film are actually kind of interesting. I mean, acting is terrible, pretty bad, but at the same time, you're interesting it, interested in them, compared to, say, say the other new modern, uh, legendary Godzilla films of the actors, you know, for those films, because you feel like, say, I mean, yeah, you can't really remember them, except, say, Brian Cranston and original, like, say, legendary Godzilla. So, yeah, I guess that's one one take, like, take away is say it's that the actors in the film did not be doing, doing a great job, but it's memorable. And that's one thing you can say about it is that it's a memorable film. So, yeah, color me shocked. But, and I'll say, what do you guys think? Put those thoughts, and also. Put your comments down below. Especially if you want to see season five. <clears throat> Subscribe! See you.